In question 41, we're still looking at features of linear equations, but this time we're giving a linear equation in standard form. Remember that standard form is when you have two quantities changing at different rates, and they combine to make the total here. And we did some story problems like uh, candy and pizza or adults and students when we wanted to sort of understand what was happening. But this is just an isolated equation with no story. In order to find the value of m, um, there are a couple different methods that you can use. But the one we used consistently across all classes is just to rewrite this in slope-intercept form. And to do that, we're solving for y. So we will subtract 8x from both sides, which will cross it out over here. And we'll bring down that negative 2y. Make sure you bring down that negative with it because it was a subtraction. But over here we notice we don't have like terms. And so in our class at least we talked about just bring it down. When it moves to the other side it gets the opposite sign. And then bring down the 24. Once we're here, we need to get just one y, so we'll divide each part by negative 2. And that will give us one y. Negative divided by a negative will give us a positive 4. And then the 24 divided by negative 2 gives me a negative 12. Let's go ahead and pause for a minute from our work here and look at the graph of this. So if I go ahead and type in the original equation in standard form. It was 8x minus 2y equals 24. The green line is the standard form equation. But then if I type in the new equation we just wrote in slope-intercept form, this purple line here, notice it completely covers the green line. These two equations, even though they look different, represent the same set of points. So when we graph them on the coordinate plane, they make the same line. If I move my cursor back to the standard form, notice the box here, it's highlighting it, the line over here looks green. But if I move it down, then the line looks purple. Okay, So we really have the same line written two different ways. What's really nice is then when we write it in the standard form, we can quickly identify the m and the b. Because the m is the number we get next to x, so m is 4, and the b is the number we get by itself, or negative 12. In order to make any line parallel to that, we'll need the slope to be the same, and in order to make it perpendicular, we will flip the fraction and change the sign. And we could use this in order to find the y-intercept pretty quickly, because remember that the b and the y-intercept are the same. But we also talked about being able to find x and y-intercept right from the standard form of a linear equation. In order to find the y-intercept, it was the value of y when x is 0. And so we would take the equation plug in a 0 for x, and 0 times anything is going to make this part go away. So we talked about you can almost just cover that and solve the remaining problem. Okay, so it's just solving this part. And to do that we need to divide by 2. And we get y equals negative 12. In order to find the x-intercept, it's the value of x when y is 0. So we could take the standard form of the equation, put a 0 in for y. But really, it's kind of like covering this part of the equation. So if we cover that, we end up with 8x equals 24. And then if we solve that by dividing... we get x equals 3 for the x-intercept. Let's go ahead and go back to the graph now. If we look here at our graph, we'll make it green just so we're looking at it in standard form. Notice that it crosses at 3, 0, which was the x-intercept we found. And it crosses the y-axis here at 0, negative 12, and that was the y-intercept we found. Those are our two extreme points. Okay, If I have no x, I need to go down to negative 12, and if I have no y, I need to go over to 3. 